our research question is, where in the Global South has land grabbing <coughs> taken place historically and more recently in the last 10 years? So the Global South is defined as a term that has been emerging from transnational and post-colonial studies and refers to what may be called the third world, i.e. Africa, Latin America and the developing countries in Asia, also known as developing countries, less developed countries and less developed regions. Land grabbing is defined as a large scale land acquisitions that are taken or bought or leased of large pieces of land by domestic and transnational companies, governments and individuals. Um, so an important question is, where in the global south does land grabbing actually take place? And just a little bit of background information before we go into that. Um, historically, sub-Saharan Africa was under colonial rule towards the end of the 19th century. Um, and therefore, indigenous, indigenous farmers um, were very dependent on their land and what their land actually could give to the... Um, people wanting to take it. Um, so for example, if a particular area attracted a large number of white settlers wanting a farm, um, was the land healthy? Uh, who had control over the area? So if it was under colonial rule, for example, uh, Britain, Germany, or sometimes Portuguese, um, how densely populated was the area by indigenous people? Um, recently, land grabbing has been criticised to feel like this practice is inequitable and unfair to the indigenous people because it's been taken off them. Um, so when looking at it historically and recently, it has changed a little bit. So recent land grabbing, 70% um, of all of it takes place in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, Asia is the second most popular target. Um, and so when we look at African grabs or the grabbing of the land, um, it's usually done by China, India, South Korea, and the Gulf Arab states, while uh, Latin America is taken by United States and Europe. Um, while in the past, so more historical land grabbing, um, sub-Saharan Africa, as I said before, was in population of colonial rule, and land grabbing originated really from Americans moving west to the native lands, moving across. Um, we also explored which groups of actors are typically in conflict over the issue. Um, so we found that usually it was people being displaced or those representing the rights of indigenous people who are in conflict with the groups. Um, companies are sometimes, um, companies and sometimes governments who attempt to or successfully acquire dispute land are also in conflict. Um, it appears to be very two-sided, the debate about um, land grabbing. On the one hand, um, there's environmental activist groups, NGOs, and native groups. On the other hand, there's governments and transnational companies. <laughs> the main point of debate for the environmental activist groups and NGOs is, um, it stems from the argument that land grabbing occurs without regard to the locals and indigenous populations who live there, eat there, and subside from the land in question. Um, the argument made on the side of governments and transnational companies is that it's uh, justified um, and usually pertains to suggesting that the benefits of land grabbing greatly overshadow the displacements or disputes made by the natives. Um, usually these benefits include economic or political gains, such as access to precious natural resources, um, strategic positions in the global struggle over control of resources, and um, land can also be considered as a resource. So, you know, collecting land and resources is like a political um, power game. Um, whilst land grabbing is often conducted with the intention of improving development in the area, a major critique is that this is a form of neocolonialism. Um, this is the practice of using capitalism, globalisation and cultural imperialism to influence developing countries through direct military control or indirect military control, so imperialism and hege hegemonic powers. Um, the aims to address, sorry, some of the positives of land grabbing are, the aims to address food crises, employment and earning foreign exchange. Um, the leasing of land is a form of trade, so this can have an increase of 2% on unemployment. Um, so this narrative has gained support from a lot of international organisations, such as the World Bank. Um, they believe that local communities can <coughs> learn new production methods through the input of foreign investments and technologies. So for example, in Ethiopia, foreign exchange earnings um, are used to achieve food security and this and thus accelerate industrialization. Um, 
Whilst investment increased in often remote and low populated areas, the largest beneficiaries were foreign investors. Um, land grabbing as part of critiques of neo-colonialism are that land grabbing encourages many neo-colonial and capitalist strategies such as land ownership and commodification of land, a decreased agency and power of local people over their own land, globalisation, exacerbating issues, hindering development already in the area. So for example, export of food areas where there's already a lack of food to local people. Um, this has also increased the presence of control of Western and imperialist states to feed the cycle of dependency. Um, land grabbing has been recognised as very high risk and as a form of neo-colonialism by a number of international organisations and NGOs who view the recent increase in land grabbing as not agricultural development, much less rural development, but simply agribusiness development. Um, cases in Mali and Zambia, where locals own shares in the companies leasing the land, have shown to directly benefit the locals. Um, so an increase in the investment of people rather than ownership of the land themselves would be more successful means of development in such areas. Uh, to review the political economy of land grabbing, uh, it generally happens in countries with high levels of corruption, and uh, there's often a conflict between companies and locals. So a farm practice, for example, might have to change to favour more machinery. Um, this could lead to an employment with less people needed to farm the land. Uh, it's often claimed that government and international investors have no interest in locals and often do not honour informal land use rights. Uh, workers, farmers and local communities will inevitably lose access to land for local food production in land grabbing, uh, whilst lands will be transformed from small holdings or forests into large industrial estates connected to large farm markets. Uh, and farmers will never be real farmers again, though there may be genuine development, but still very much new colonialism. And uh, to conclude, as land grabbing takes place in developing countries, there are lots of questions of whether these countries have been taken advantage of. Uh, whilst I mentioned before, it can address uh, employment and uh, food prices, though there's rightly scepticism based on colonialism, colonialism's legacy in the past. Uh, as a whole, however, we consider land grabbing to essentially be the modern day equivalent of colonialism, with locals often not benefit benefiting and many of the benefits going to the corrupt government officials in the country.